it's finally happening. The 3D printer race to the bottom might finally be over in favor of polished products that just work. In this video, I'm gonna tell you why that's great, but also discuss some concerns. I think we might be at the start of a new 3D printing era, an example of which is this Ankermake M5, which I've just started reviewing. Myself and many of you have been demanding this from manufacturers for years. So is it all good news? Well, perhaps not. There are a lot of discussion points in this video, so make sure to have your say in the comments section below. Let's start with a quick recap of the consumer 3D printing market over the last five years or so. Prusa was one popular company to develop early RepRap designs into the i3 concept, thus making 3D printing more palatable for many more people, creating the Mendel, and then with further refinement, the i3 series. One of the strengths of Prusa is that it made its designs open source, and that allowed others to build on the concept and make their own variations. Probably the most significant of these was Creality with their CR10. Structurally, this printer had a lot of design elements similar to the Prusa i3, but with a larger build volume and a relatively affordable price thanks to the scale of Chinese manufacturing. They then had a true hit on their hands with the smaller, cheaper Ender 3. For many, many people, this was a gateway 3D printer, getting them into the hobby and teaching them the potential and problems of 3D printing where they could then branch out to other designs. I mean, technically, these Creality printers were open source as well, but anyone who's compared the source files will see the difference in approach. And anyone who's been around for a while will remember the efforts of people like Naomi Wu in getting Creality to even comply. But as it turned out, Creality was much more compliant than many of the clones to follow. The market became flooded with cheap Me Too printers, all of them clamoring to stand out in this flood of clones and profit in their own corner of the consumer 3D printer market. But why would anyone buy your 3D printer over one that looks pretty much the same? The most popular strategy was to make one clone very slightly cheaper than the next. And of course that was repeated over and over until we had our race to the bottom. My experience as a reviewer was similar to that of consumers, very hit or miss. Some cheap printers that I've tested have been not perfect but still surprisingly good whereas others, quite frankly, have been trash, with significant problems that stop it from working properly straight out of the box. And it's not really surprising because the money has to be saved somewhere, and typically in these race to the bottom clone printers, that means poor design, manufacture, assembly, a complete lack of quality control, and at best, very hit or miss after sales support. How ridiculous is it that I had to solder brand new mainboards just to get printers operating so I could review them? Personally, I was fed up and it was pretty clear that you were too. A couple of years ago, I created this community post asking what people actually wanted in their 3D printers. And after reading the many responses and collating the results into a spreadsheet, I released this video summing up the community's position. Most responses wanted exactly the same things. Improved quality control. Better documentation that didn't seem like an afterthought. Actual technical support with a proper warranty and after sales support, and refinement. Many people wanted a 3D printing experience as simple and reliable as 2D printing. What was frustratingly obvious was that people were willing to pay more as long as the product was good enough. And that brings us on to our next topic, Prusa, the exception. Prusa 3D printers were always way more expensive than the clones, yet Prusa built a large and loyal customer base despite this. Even in the face of clones, Prusa has remained open source. And with this approach, Prusa have grown from humble beginnings to a staff of more than 700 people. Personally, as a Prusa customer, I know they're not perfect, but I appreciate their 24 seven web support and the fact they use visible quality control processes to ensure that what you receive works as advertised. In building customer loyalty, it certainly doesn't hurt to see real people assembling and testing their machines. This human side is a large factor in why people will spend more on a Prusa than a clone. This formula was never a secret, so it was silly that other manufacturers took so long to catch on. So what is this new era? What is this new approach? And what companies are involved? I'm gonna focus on three that I have first-hand experience with. The first, and to a lesser extent, is Snapmaker. 
The second is Bamboo Lab with the X1 Carbon and P1P. And the third, which I've just started reviewing, is the M5 from Anchor Make. So what do these machines all have in common? Firstly, a focus on the aesthetics of the machine. Many components are metal and are powder coated or anodized to give a very high end premium feel. Rather than have exposed fasteners, wiring and other components that would make the average viewer think that it's solely for tinkerers, these machines have all of the technical bits concealed and they have the premium design that you might expect from a high end mobile phone. This focus on visual quality extends through to the instructions and the user interface as well. With clear instructions, actual proofreading and a feel of quality rather than the documents being an afterthought. Each of these machines have large, colourful, high resolution touchscreens. Even for someone who's never used a 3D printer before, they've no doubt used a touch mobile phone, so using these printers feels instantly intuitive. For the printers from Bamboo Lab as well as from Anchormake, they're self-leveling with no need for the user to even set a Z offset, removing one of the biggest hurdles for those new to 3D printing. Because of this, it's very easy to hit the ground running and to produce a high quality and high speed first print. A new user doesn't have to wait that long to see what their shiny new toy can produce. Compare this to many Me Too printers where the first result took hours and still had some blemishes. And sometimes that was because the pre-sliced files provided on the SD card were as conservative as possible to make the printer's results look as good as possible. The experience with the associated software is just as good. With companion apps available from the proper app stores, allowing you to connect to the printer from anywhere in the world. With design languages that match apps that the average person is used to, which once again makes them very intuitive to use. This continues with slicer software, where presets are built in for many different materials. And unless the user switches to an expert mode, the available options are kept brief and easily understandable. More importantly, these preset profiles are actually good and will ensure the user has some success, even if they don't understand anything about slicing. Adding even more convenience, a firmware updates straight from the printer's interface. Once again, in line with the experience of a mobile phone, where you just tap a button and everything takes care of itself. And if you do get into trouble, there's resources available online with either wiki articles or embedded videos going through common procedures step by step. And better yet, you can get step by step help instructions built right into the machine's interface without ever going to your computer. The combination of all of this for me makes what users ask for, a 3D printing experience that's as simple and reliable as that of a 2D printer. So instead of buying a 3D printer that mostly works and then relying on community support to keep it going, you can now buy 3D printers that work out of the box like you would expect from any other high-end electronics. So what are the implications of this? Let's break this down into categories, starting with what this era means for users. Previously, if someone bought an average consumer 3D printer, more likely than not, they would need to invest time and energy into learning all of the little details. With any luck, this would be limited to things like leveling the bed and learning how to use slicing software. They would probably have to calibrate their printer and possibly modify it to increase reliability and performance. And once they were comfortable with all of that, they could start to actually make stuff. Of course, for many new users, this would be too hard and they simply get trapped in the learning pit. Let's consider a scenario like this that's not really that unlikely. The model comes loose from the bed and then a ball of molten filament covers the entire hot end. In the face of this, most people are going to sell their 3D printer or let it collect dust. And even someone who had successfully learnt the first details of 3D printing could still get stuck on an obstacle like this and end up abandoning the hobby because of it. If we are in a new era, what is the user experience going to be like now? Because of the added refinement and quality control, you'd hope that most new users will immediately just be able to make stuff. And if there is a problem, you'd hope that the built-in support network means they'll be making stuff very soon once more. So hopefully that will free them up to instead invest their time into learning design with a CAD program of their choice. Which means of course they'll be able to make even better stuff. Because for me, one of life's great satisfactions is imagining an idea, modeling it on the computer, and then bringing it to life with 3D printing. But what does this mean for tinkerers, those people that like the process of playing with printers? 
I've always said that a 3D printer can be used as a tool or as a hobby or anywhere in between. And personally, I fall along different parts of this spectrum depending on what printer it is. These new generation 3D printers require a lot less depth of knowledge to operate effectively because they're good at holding your hand and a lot of the hard work is done for you. However, cheap 3D printers aren't going away anytime soon. So for those that want to buy something cheap and build it up, modifying it physically or perhaps changing which firmware it uses, there's always going to be plenty of options for them. And for those that want the full do-it-yourself experience but with a high-end result, I don't see the end of premium 3D printer kits anytime soon, especially when their final quality and speed can match anything these new age printers can produce. Just like with cars, most people want a daily driver that will reliably get them from point A to point B. Whereas other times, people want a vehicle that they can play with as that forms the basis of their hobby. For cars and 3D printers, I think there'll always be plenty of options for both. For a different perspective, what does this shift mean for content creators like myself? It's no secret that I built up my channel on a range of tutorials for modifying and improving cheap 3D printers like the Ender 3. So with a shift to 3D printers that don't need this modification, does that mean I'll run out of videos? Absolutely not. As we discussed, 3D printing will still be a hobby that encourages people to invest time in learning more. And personally, I'm quite happy to spend time making videos that teach people to design and be more creative. And to be honest, my favorite videos to make are those where I take you step by step through a project I'm undertaking, where the focus is on 3D printing as a way to make a solution rather than 3D printing itself. Plus, I'll still be looking to build more do-it-yourself printer kits in future simply because I find it so enjoyable. Perhaps the most relevant question is what does this mean for other manufacturers? I expect the current manufacturers to start trying to clone these premium machines and miss the point trying to undercut them on price rather than delivering a quality experience for the user. Bamboo Lab clones are already starting to appear and I almost agreed to reviewing this Cheaty Tech X Plus 3 but then my patrons shared with me this excellent and honest review from James at Cloud42 and I'm so glad I didn't because this printer as James tested it was riddled with issues. Creality also have a Bamboo X1 clone with the K1. I'm very interested to see if this actually delivers and I'd be happy to review one as long as Creality are happy for me to be transparent like I was with their last printer I reviewed, the CR10 Smart. The most interesting consequence is for Prusa, who for a long time were alone at this price point in offering a 3D printer that just works. They've recently released their original Prusa Mark IV that at $1100 is significantly more expensive than the Bamboo Lab P1P and only a little bit cheaper than the X1 Carbon. It's also significantly more expensive than the Ankermake M5, which similar to the Prusa Mark IV, maximizes the i3 Bedslinger platform, aiming for high speed and high quality. I've purchased a few Prusas of myself over the years and for the most part have been very happy with them. I won't be buying a Mark IV because it doesn't offer anything my existing printers don't already have, but I do have a 5 tool head change of Prusa XL on order because it does offer something unique. Prusa have built up a lot of goodwill from having many of these new generation features in place for years now. But the need for manual assembly and the usage of 3D printed parts that have a very different aesthetic to the new generation printers may or may not be something they need to change in the future, I just don't know. As exciting as these new era machines are, there are still some challenges remaining. When you print fast, you need a lot of hot end flow as well as a lot of part cooling. And the fan approach used for typical part cooling is unfortunately very loud. The enclosure of the X1 masks the fan noise a little but there's still a lot happening. And the anchor make is slightly louder than this. Perhaps one advantage Prusa will still retain is having really quiet printers. A more serious issue to overcome is intellectual property, with Prusa recently releasing a blog post on the state of open source printing in 2023. Prusa have built up their designs using an open source philosophy, having borrowed from the community as well as contributing back, and in this article state that their machines will always be open source. These new printers from Bamboo Lab as well as Ankermake despite having similar structures to existing 3D printers, have kept their designs closed source. 
Bamboo Lab have the source code for their slicer available since it's forked from Prusa Slicer, and Anchor Make similarly have their slicer source available since it's based on Cura. They also have the source code available for their version of Marlin firmware, but I wouldn't expect them to release the source material for any other components of their printers anytime soon. Some people couldn't care less about this, but for others it makes them really angry, because they see it as taking but not giving back to the community that has made 3D printing what it is today. Prusa acknowledges the history of 3D printing and is built with a community approach, giving back with free cutting edge software and remaining open source, whereas the new generation take a more corporate approach. With Anchor already being an established brand in consumer electronics, and Bamboo being founded by staff who previously worked at DJI. I think it's fascinating to see how this will all work out and how the 3D printing market will evolve. Those are my thoughts, but maybe I'm not talking any sense. Let me know your opinion in the comments. Also, this is not a review for the Ankermake M5. That will come in time when it has been tested thoroughly in accordance with my review policy. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing perhaps in a new era. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.